As we report at the top of the hour, the mass shootings in Connecticut are sparking a new gun control debate in our country. There's a growing movement across the country to ban or restrict gun shows. As the White House weighs broad gun control legislation following the Sandy Hook massacre. Are gun shows the proper target or are they a scapegoat? Let's bring in our Fox News contributors, Ellen Ratner, Bureau Chief of Talk Radio News Service, and Tammy Bruce, radio talk show host. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. I must say, color coordinated. Hi, Lovely. Uh, <laughs> Ellen, first you. Um, what do you think the White House has planned on gun control? I think that they're probably not going to do something as broad as I would do. I think that they are going to try and tighten up uh, the restrictions that take place around assault weapons, uh, 10 magazines, etc. I, You know, I would allow, outlaw anything except rifles, but uh, I don't think they're going to be that tough. And Tammy, in terms of the gun shows, how do you see legal gun owners either benefiting or being hurt by any new legislation? Look, all of this is a shiny object. We know, and we all, I would hope, want the same uh, ob objective. I think some politicians don't who want to take advantage of a crisis, but we want this madness to stop. We also know suicides of Eclipse are now the number one uh, cause of death for young people in this country as opposed to car accidents which they've eclipsed. Uh, so this is about a shiny object which keeps us away from looking at the real issues at hand, which is the collapse of society, uh, social issues, hopelessness, joblessness, depression. Uh, you know, as long as we are pointing to an inanim inanimate object, a lot of politicians, those who move the, the leftist agenda, don't want you talking about like situations in Chicago, which you can see are really a microcosm of what happens when all of those factors come into, into play. And it's, it's now the, the gun murder capital of the country, which is a gun-free zone. So we have to look at this, I think, because of the nature of us wanting to make a change. As long as we're looking at things like gun shows and rifles or handguns, you're missing the entire problem, which is the human condition, the nature of mental illness, uh, and, and the collapse of family uh, and uh, the internal structure in this country. You know, when it comes to suicide, sadly, there aren't just guns. There are pills. There are, you can throw yourself in front of a train. We've seen it all. But Ellen, is there a compromise position that keeps our children and other adults well, safe? Compromise... Because wait, I just want to say, keeping safe, I'm not referring to legal gun owners. Most of the crimes in this country committed with guns are illegal gun owners. Right. You know, look, I used to work in mental health for 20 years, and I can tell you, of course, all of those issues are very important, including the issue of poverty, including the issue of unemployment. Those are all important issues. But then if you have somebody, you know, when you have access to a gun and you can get it and there is nothing Nothing between the gun, purchasing the gun and your action, no time, no background check. That's what happens at gun shows, and that's the problem as well, because you want to at least put in some thought process, something so that somebody's brain doesn't go, I have a thought, I'm going to use a gun. I mean, we have more uh, strictures for people uh, who are driving a car than we do for people buying guns at gun shows. Or even prescription drugs. Well, Tammy, let me ask well, you, would well, a waiting period yeah. be helpful? Would better background checks be well, helpful uh, or enough? And whose responsibility should this be, the federal government or the states? Well, here's the irony. None of the horrible events we have been dealing with have took place because somebody bought a gun at a gun show. Uh, I mean, I understand that I, I, I'm a firearm owner. I'm a Second Amendment supporter. I don't mind background checks, absolutely. But this, this is what is really revelatory is that when you are looking at the, the people that commit these mass crimes, they, they commit them in gun-free zones. And in the one exception, which was Tucson, you have somebody who was so mentally disturbed, it took us a year to force him on medication to address the issues. So, you know, you're looking at, again, distractions because politicians don't want Americans to look at the nature of what's happened at the grassroots of this country. Well, you, now, you've wait, raised wait, that wait, issue. Wait, 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 uh, Columbine, uh, the woman who bought those guns yeah. for those two guys at Columbine, said had there been a background check, had she been forced to fill out the paperwork, she would never have bought those guns for those guys. All right, ladies, I know you understand. I have to leave it there, but both of you raised the issues of looking at the whole picture. I think that's great, and hopefully our country will. Yeah. See you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Okay.